So today I saw tons of rumors swirling around regarding the RX 9070 XT that frankly, well, were already leaked by this channel, in some cases, even months ago. And it got me thinking, if people are this desperate to regurgitate the same information that we've already known for a while, uh, maybe the hype and the speculation are getting so out of hand for RDNA 4 that it might be a good idea for me to set the record straight on what's possible for AMD's new graphics cards, even if it's just one week before they officially confirm everything. It's because it's just getting so bad out there that even AMD has had to personally shoot down rumors about things like a 32 gigabyte 9070 XT happening at launch. And on that note, let's be very clear about this. There have been 9070 XTs and 9070s in stores back rooms for over a month now. That means they've been there, the specs, and that includes 16 gigabytes of VRAM capacity. That's very much so locked in. Seriously, people, I haven't showed this from the documentation that I pulled from to leak RDNA 4 performance a bit ago, but I'm going to show this now. 16 gigabytes is clearly called out in AMD documentation for RDNA 4 graphics cards. They cannot change that for launch, especially because they already shipped the cards. The cards are done. Okay, but here's the thing, though. I do actually still think that eventually 32 gigabyte cards or faster clock cards could be possible later and that's because we've already seen that many models from aibs can supposedly hit 3.1 gigahertz at stock so the potential for very highly clocked higher tier models of the 9070 xt are plausible even if that wasn't amd's initial plans as we've seen confirmed from cards already being in stores but you know what Plans can change, and shouldn't they change after how bad NVIDIA's RTX 5000 cards have turned out? I mean, come on. AMD has to see an opportunity here after bad news cycle after bad news cycle after problem after problem with NVIDIA's RTX 5090 through 5070 Ti graphics cards. I mean, the market is begging for AMD to do a sneak attack on NVIDIA's high end, in my opinion. And that gets me to the subject of today's video, which is that I believe there definitely is room, even if it's not happening immediately, potentially, for AMD to pull another 7970 gigahertz edition move whereby they surprise NVIDIA after initial launch with a stronger model with far higher clocks and a higher TDP that puts a strong presence in the high-end market that NVIDIA wasn't expecting. In fact, that worked so well with the 7970 gigahertz edition, especially with how well that architecture aged relative to NVIDIA's at the time, that eventually AMD was just able to start blatantly marketing the 7970 gigahertz as a tier higher than the 80 class card of the time. That was a huge marketing win for AMD, and I think they could do something similar again. Although, I don't know that the... 9070 XT gigahertz edition or whatever would do as well as that one did but but here's what I think it could definitely do and what I think is possible so first of all I think that we need to understand just saying this once again that the cards AMD shipped a month ago they're there that should remain the standard 9070 and 9070 XT models that means yes they'll still just have 16 gigabytes of GDDR6 for the most part they'll have boost clocks around three gigahertz and i do not think amd should walk that back try to do some bios update to make them faster or change anything about these reasonable which means they can be reasonably priced models and yes that means i think they should make these initial cards that are again are already shipped they should make them aggressively priced if i was amd assuming the 9070 16 gigabyte crushes the 5070 12 gigabyte and the 9070 xt even narrowly beats the 5070 ti i think that's possible based on the data i've seen i would price those at something like 449 and 599 or maybe 499 and 649 for the 9070 and 9070 xt respectively depending on exactly how the performance shakes out offer 20 30 40 percent better value than nvidia for these standard models but what I would also do then is announce, whether it's a week from now at the unveiling or perhaps even on the delayed RTX 5070 review day or something, I would announce at some point that those are the standard models, but that me, me being AMD, that we're partnering with AIBs on extreme editions of the 9070 XT that would aim to compete with cards as strong as the 5080. And here is why I think doing this would be a masterful 40 chess move for Radeon. AMD 
would get glowing day one reviews from tech tubers who applaud AMD for actually listening to the community after months of shenanigans from Nvidia, and there would be little argument that the pricing is real for the standard models. You know, they don't have unreasonable power consumption requirements. They don't use stupid connectors that melt. You can buy them. They're at the price they should be. I think you'd see tons of people say great things and those day one reviews would stick and people would regard the series well. But then in the meantime, AMD could also make it clear around the launch, before the launch, or maybe even after the launch, that there's going to eventually be cards launching with extreme edition monikers and they'll just, I mean, this is an example, I know exactly what it would be, but maybe they would have like a requirement to get this badging to have 3.1 gigahertz you know standard operating clocks a base tdp of 360 watts which by the way is the same tdp as the rtx 5080 which is almost 20 percent more power than the standard 9070 xt will have uh and besides that though you can go crazy as long as you like position the power around 360 watts or higher as long as this thing's boosting well above three gigahertz it doesn't need to be 3.2 but it can be if you get enough golden samples you know sapphire or something you can do whatever you want you can have some aibs coming up with these 450 watt rtx 5090 cooler models that have 32 gigabytes of the fastest gddr6 on the market and then they can sell that for a thousand dollars and argue it's a budget alternative to the 5090 or if you want to just min max price performance against the 5080 maybe someone you know at xfx can still just give it 16 gigabytes of ram but then push the core clocks very high and try to match or beat the 5080 for 799 either way though it would be up to aibs to push the cards as hard as they want give it as much ram as they want and price them where they want to all you have to do is give it that minimum clocks and power and amd could put on that box extreme edition and after that the burden would be on the aibs to do whatever they want which means it's not amd's fault if they price them above msrp now i can already hear some of you typing in all caps that going above msrp is anti-consumer but hear me out here there are shortages right now in the graphics card market and nvidia sure as shit isn't doing anything to help with that and this is in my opinion the most honest way that amd could allow for pricier models to exist in the market while also being honest about which ones of their cards are actually at msrp and look if nobody buys some hypothetical one thousand dollar 32 gigabyte model then AIBs will stop making it. But even if it was a limited run of that expensive 32 gigabyte model, I think that would give a black eye to NVIDIA and put some more pricing pressure, not just on the 5070 and the 5070 Ti, but it would allow AIBs to go crazy and put pricing pressure on the 5080, which as a reality check for anyone who thinks it would be unfair for AMD to charge $1,000 for a 32 gigabyte 5080 killer, let's remember what the 5080 is actually selling for right now on eBay, wildly above MSRP, and that is why I think this idea both allows AMD to avoid blame for cards being above MSRP, but also unshackles AIBs to go for overpriced NVIDIA models so that there's actually some pricing pressure above $700. I just think this would work incredibly well. There'd be no need to adjust or recall the 9070 XT to make it faster. Keep it how it is, reasonably uh, powerful and cheap. And there'd be no need for AMD to try to engineer some 9080 XT 32 gigabyte edition that would probably get panned in reviews for having a high price. It's on the AIBs to figure out what the market wants and yet still, give nvidia a black eye now to be clear i have no information from any sources that this is what amd is going to do and i have no idea if they will do such a thing or if they will call something a 9080 xt don't clip this bloody video and act like i was wrong in a week from now when amd doesn't announce this i'm not saying they will but I, boy, do I think this could work. And whether they announce something like this in a week, I really think AMD should consider doing this because there's no way around it. Blackwell has completely fallen short of expectations. It's mired in problems. And because of that, AMD should try to find some way to go above the 5070 Ti tier while avoiding the obvious pitfalls that could come if they make themselves look too greedy or fly too close to the sun.
All right, that's it. No ads in this video. I just wanted to get this idea out there because I thought it was a very interesting one. I want to hear what you think about it in the comments below. And of course, also please like the video, share the video, and subscribe to Moore's Law Z on YouTube. Uh, but then also I want to promote this one thing, I guess. Consider joining the Moore's Law is Dead Patreon. We just had a bonus episode of Die Shrink go up with a game developer. It's kind of an emergency thing thrown together to have someone, an expert in the industry, explain why the recent NVIDIA move to effectively kill PhysX for the RTX 5000 series sets a very bad and horrible precedence that is much worse than you might think it is. And well, if you want to get access to that, just $2 gets you access to the tier that will let you watch that and hundreds of other die shrink videos. So please, the best way to support Moore's Law is that is actually to support us independently on the Patreon. So yep, yeah, please do that if you have that extra $2. But you know, for everybody else, no matter what, if you made it this far in the video, thank you for watching.